Welcome to a cloudy day in Thailand as monsoon season is just dribbling through. But that gives me a good incentive to go back and do something fun with my battery pack. Now, this is the design for the cell holders for the 16 cell test battery that I built. So there's 16 here. Now what I need to do is to get that uh, set up for 20 cells because we're going for an 84, 72 volt pack at 84 volts fully, fully charged. So I need to add two more cell holes to the outside while maintaining the intercell gap and the extra bit on the end because that's different from the, uh, the spacing between the cells. It's thicker at the end then I also need to stack this thing three high. Now, I know Fusion 360 just enough to get me into trouble, um, but this is going to be a bit of a challenge, even though all the drawing part has been solved. Uh, let's see what it takes. And here's what I ended up with. So what I had to do to, to add the two, uh, the two extra rows of cells on, onto the end in the first step, is take that initial one we had of 16, copy it, flip it around, attach it to the end, and then cut the extra off, which was a pain. And then it was fairly straightforward to take the, the 10 long one, copy it three times, and then join them all together. Uh, one extra thing I did that you can see is I added these holes, these four millimeter holes, to be able to bond the two halves of the cell holder together to uh, keep it in place. Now, I was looking at trying to buy some hardware for this, say some four millimeter plastic bolts that needed to be 80 millimeters long. <clears throat> Couldn't find anything. Then I realized I could just use zip ties. I can run a zip tie from here around the other side and come out here and bind it that way. It might take a doubling up on the zip ties, one to go out and then one to come back. So I do that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And that should pretty securely hold the, uh, the cells in place. So let's export this and see how it looks in Simplify 3D in preparation for printing. Okay, now that we've got the uh, cell holder print, uh, designed, we need to print it out. But it is too big for the original blue printing surface that came with the printer. Fortunately, I noticed that the print head, the travel of it, can go uh, quite a bit farther than would be allowed by the blue platform. So I went out and I bought, I ordered a piece of tempered glass. I think it's 300 millimeters by 200 millimeters and I adhered it to the blue plate with hairspray. I sprayed it on, I stuck on the glass, I kind of squeezed out the bubbles, then I ran it through a heat and cooling cycle and now it's pretty stuck. So what I'll do is I'll cover it in blue tape because we're going back to printing with PLA and we can try and print the new huge cell holder. Now one also thing I had to do was in, in software I could not account for the five millimeter thickness of this glass. The Simplify 3D has a lot of customizability except I couldn't find a way to make a five millimeter offset everywhere in the software. So what I had to do was uh, print an exactly five millimeter tall brick, which then touches this limit switch right here, which it can't focus on. Focus. There's a limit switch right there. That tells the printer firmware exactly where the build platform is and it adjusts itself. So that's the way we're gonna solve that problem. So let's take a look and see how the printing process works out. Okay, here I dropped the part into Simplify 3D. And if I spin it around, 
you can see that Simplify thinks that the part is too big for the printing surface. And in fact, it complained when I dropped it and it said this part is too big. But I know we're going to have a piece of glass in there so I can easily extend the printing surface to the side. Now what I did is I centered it side to side. You can see this is about the same width as that. But I lined it up to coincide with the back because I believe the back of the printing plate is pretty much the extent of how where the print head can move in that direction. So I let the, the print hang off the front more because I know the print head has more capability to move forward. So it's in the right position. Let's print PLA in fast mode. And this is what it's going to look like. You can see uh, it puts down these rectangular and square pads first, and then it builds the bridge across, and then it draws the circles, and then it starts building the cup holders for the cells, and then we're done. So it still shows the same in the, uh, the preview of hanging off the, the build surface, but that's okay. So let's export this and try and see how it prints. Okay, here we have the completed first print of one side of the battery pack holder. You can see it's taking up a lot of space on that glass plate and it never would have fit without it. It took uh, six and a half hours. So let's pop that off and print up the second one. Okay, here we have the finished uh, cell holder with some cells just stuck in there to keep it from falling over. And this is three modules. This is one module of 20 cells. These are all in series. Another module in series and another module in series. And these will all be connected in parallel for both charging and discharging. So then we, just for fun, We'll put the second pack end that was printed and snap that into place. So we now have our first module, not only for building and testing, but we get to see how it fits inside the box. Okay, here's the battery box. Alert viewers will remember my earlier mock-ups with 18650 cells. So those are going out the window. Let's put our module in place and see how that goes. Well, that's pretty good. It's got enough clearance that it won't be hindered by the way the uh, handles come down from the inside. And it's got enough clearance side to side that I can put some padding in. And I can put one two, but then I can't put a third one in unless I reconstruct this thing here. It can also go this way, one, two, and then I have the same problem. So this has got to go, but even with that gone, one, two, three, I'm just short of enough space to fit four of them in. So I think three will be good. Uh, re-engineer this, redo the uh, fiberglass here, and we can start to play around. I'll make a, populate this, build, get the cells bottom balanced, actually make a pack out of that, and put it in the bike and see how she goes. So, signing off for now. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again. And I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.